Hi, I'm Lyle Roberts and I'm a researcher at the Australian National University and um, what I'm going to do is uh, today show off a really really neat piece of equipment in our lab called Herculab. Okay, so the experiment we've got set up here um, is a simple Mark Zender heterodyne interferometer. We essentially generate light from a, um, a DFB laser here and then we separate it into two arms. One of those arms is frequency shifted using a Guchin Hausko acoustic optic modulator. Uh, and the other one is just goes through a polarization controller um, and then those two arms are recombined at another 50-50 fiber coupler uh, at which point they um, interfere at a balanced photo detector. The first instrument I want to show you is the oscilloscope. This is a, a very very typical instrument to use when you're first bringing these um, interferometers up. Um, essentially what I'm interested in here is that I'm generating a beat note at the right frequency um, and so, you know, with an acoustic modulator, you actually have to supply it with a tone uh, at the correct frequency. And so, the, a really, really cool thing about Mokulab is that I can generate the 80 megahertz AOM beat, uh, sorry, tone, um, whilst in the oscilloscope instrument. And so, the 80 megahertz tone is going through an amplifier uh, and then back into the AOM. And I'm essentially just looking at the interference of the uh, interferometer um, in the oscilloscope here. So what I'm interested in looking at is number one, the frequency, but also the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of that beat note. Okay, and I'm satisfied that uh, given this configuration, everything looks good. And so now what I will do is have a look at this in the frequency domain. Now that we've looked at the signal in the time domain, um, what I'm now interested in doing is just observing um, how it appears in the frequency domain and so to do that I'm just going to switch instruments to the spectrum analyzer and so what I can now do is, is see that I've, I've got a clear peak at 80 megahertz um, at you know some particular uh, amplitude there but I also want to see you know some other features uh, around that frequency and you, so you can see some sidebands you can see some uh, the noise floor of the laser there um, but you know, I'm, I'm particularly interested in what's happening within a few hundred kilohertz of our uh, tone, and so and that's what we get. Okay, so the spectrum analyzer is really really great again because I can bring up you know quick measurements that allow me to basically say, oh, this is how everything is set up and configured, um, and then once I'm happy with that, I can then move on with my experiment. Uh, one of the cool things about Mercury Lab is that you know I it gives me the freedom or flexibility to sort of perform measurements that I otherwise wouldn't bother uh, performing, right? I mean, you know, one of the things that we're really, really interested in is because we just bought this acoustic optic modulator, we, we want to measure its frequency response. And so to do that, I'm just going to switch instruments to a Bode analyzer. Uh, and what this is going to do is sweep the frequency at which the AOM is being driven. And then by observing the beat note that is produced at the photo detector on Mercury Lab, it's able to do a comparison of those two and, and then show me the shape. And so what's particularly interesting here is you know, the, the, the point at which um, we get maximum power, which should be around 80 megahertz, which it is, uh, but we're also kind of interested in the bandwidth. And so you can see here that I can, <laughs> I can, I've got quite a wide bandwidth on this acoustic optic modulator, which mm. is actually quite rare. And that's useful for us because it means that we're not locked in at one frequency. We can actually set the heterodyne frequency of our interferometer um, anywhere from really, uh, like in this case, 50 megahertz up to probably 110 megahertz. Uh, and that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Cool. Okay. okay, so now that I'm confident that the interferometer is set up and configured the way I want, I'm now going to get on with the actual measurement. And to do that, I'm going to switch instruments to the phase meter. And that's this little guy here. And so what we can see now is we've launched a entirely new instrument. Now the thing that you should, I should reiterate is that with all of these instruments that I've shown you, they, they can both measure on the inputs and synthesize tones on the outputs. And so from the phase meter, what I'm now doing is driving the AOM at uh, 80 megahertz. And then I'm going to look at the interference of, um, of the interferometer on the inputs and now observe the phase. And what the phase tells me in this case is how the different path lengths, the different arms in this interferometer are moving with respect to each other. Okay, and that's really, really handy because what it can tell you is 
um, you know, give you very, very precise measurement of displacement or motion. Okay, so to show that, what I'll do is I'll sh look at the, the phase of the 80 megahertz beat note. And to illustrate what I'm talking about, I'll zoom in a little bit. And then I'm going to tap one of the fibers. And you can see that as I tap it, it's now moving around a lot. Okay, like this. And so a heterodyne interferometer in this, you know, in this configuration is very, very sensitive to motion. And what you can imagine is that you might want to use this kind of instrument to uh, essentially detect that motion. Or if you're like us, we want to use that, that phase information and feed it back to stabilize the relative path lengths of these two, um, of the two armors. Different features that appear in the amplitude spectral density, uh, they can, you know, often you know, tell us something about what's going on or tell us at what frequencies certain uh, you know, sources of noise are occurring at. So this is really, really handy for us in particular, um, but ultimately we, you know, we don't just rely on the measurement displayed on screen here. Uh, what we tend to do is actually log data. And so what I can do is, is essentially set up a, a measurement for, I'm gonna say five seconds. I'm gonna save it to RAM on the actual device and then we'll hit go. And what this is going to do is record the phase difference between these two arms in the interferometer for five seconds. And then once I'm done with it, I can click this icon up here uh, and then take that data and export it to, you know, in my case, Dropbox. Simplifies the way we do things in the lab. Uh, you know, we, we, what I just did here, getting this interferometer set up, would ordinarily take me about 20 to 30 minutes. And that's because I have to you know, disconnect the input from an oscilloscope, plug it into a spectrum analyzer. Sometimes you don't have access to these instruments. Uh, but you know, the other thing is, you know, just is simply the ability to perform measurements you otherwise wouldn't is, is really, really powerful. And the measurement that we're interested in here has you know, more than the precision we need. And are you gonna buy any more? Uh, yeah, we have. We bought one in red.